Good morning, everybody. Uh, I thought about doing another video on the Super League. It's a little bit better formed ideas, but then I said, why? Why shall we talk about a depressing topic? The way that's depressing enough, let's talk about something that's coming up. And I thought I'll make, we have now three days until the Nations League comes again. So this is today, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I thought let's look at how things are in the different leagues, what are the upcoming matches. And yeah, I'm gonna focus on League A today. I'm gonna do League B tomorrow and uh, League C and D. Thursday probably. Um, although I have to see how it, how, how, how it goes. I might pull A and B together today because it's just uh, way more present in my head how those leagues are than the other two. But you know, let's see. I'll start with League A and actually the way it's scheduled the first, I mean they're all more or less parallel and I'm glad that the zone will make another goal zone conference uh, for Nations League because I think this is just much better than me trying to uh, figure out which game to watch and then you kind of feel uh, not so great about it especially uh, Thursday where we have first game is Belgium Iceland uh, it's not a high stakes match to be honest uh, the stakes are for Belgium beats Iceland uh, and puts himself in a great position against Switzerland. Um, that's hoping that uh, they didn't get the points, the necessary points against Switzerland. That's all that is uh, in that match. Um, in so far it's not super high stakes. Iceland is already relegated and Belgium and Switzerland have their final game of course, uh, if Belgium gets the win now, uh, they have the three points in the draw in Switzerland. We'll see them through and probably this is uh, the advantage. Uh, same actually, if I think about it, is if, just, if Belgium just plays a draw against uh, Iceland. So then they are point ahead, a draw will see them through and the loss. So the stakes in that game are not that high. Um, the other game that we have is Croatia against Spain. Uh, yeah, it's also, I mean, for Croatia, it's more or less avoid relegation in that one with a win against Spain, but also a little bit of a revenge after what Spain did to them in Spain. Uh, and for Spain, it's basically a bounce back because, you know, they lost to England. And that, you know, they're sitting at six. Uh, points, if I'm correct, yeah, that's easy to six points. England had the draw against uh, Croatia and now the win against Spain, they have four points, but Spain has a um, game in addition. So, um, yeah, if 6 4, if Spain wins that one, they're through. If Spain like, gets a draw, then it's seven. Um, probably will still see them through. Uh, although I think the direct uh, direct comparison is in England's favor. Let me just, yeah, that's in England's favor. So, nah, so a draw will not see them through yet. So, Spain better win. If Spain wins, then they're in the final four. If not, uh, they are there's a chance that England can overtake and make it to the final four, which to some degree, uh, to be honest, I always, I always had some liking for Spain, uh, but given their misfortunes of late and my newfound love for England, I wouldn't actually mind it that much. I really, I gotta say, there's something about uh, uh, Gareth Southgate that I absolutely adore. Uh, this England team is not a is not a super talented squad, although there's something coming and uh, they have good players in there. But uh, as compared to Spain, no way. And if you remember that game in Spain, Sevilla, Sevilla, 
uh, it's you even at three nil up. I never had the thought that uh, that this is a done deal. Yes, three nil up is a clear indication that you're gonna win. But I knew that if Spain gets anything going, they almost almost did. If that penalty was given, that ends in a draw. I'm convinced of that. So yeah, um, you gotta do what you gotta do. But there's still something about this England team that I, I really like, and I think they there's something good coming there. And in a way, that makes me happy uh, because that was always my issue with England: is that they are so stuck in their own ways, and uh, you know. Not always thinking, yeah, we have to win anyway because we're the founders of the game and we have done it right and we're the only ones who do it right and you know, splendid isolation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they, I like the humility that they approach this with and uh, it's kind of a newfound humility. Uh, and I would find it ironic that if this team that no one would say is the most talented team in English history that exactly this team will uh, win a title. I would be very happy about that, honestly. Uh, and not the Beckham, Jenna, Lampard, Jenna generation, which was a wasted generation, honestly. Um, I think they had the right coach in Eriksson at one point, but maybe they clung to him for too long. And also, um, there was, you know, the Premier League looms so large that players, especially in the 2000s, get wasted in the grind that is the Premier League and then European competition that at the World Cup or European Championship you just cannot bring it anymore. Uh, that is now a little bit better, I would say. So yeah, that's that league and then the final matchup uh, which we'll have on Sunday is then uh, England at, at Wembley against Croatia and depending on the result there could be still something at stake. I, I would even say if Croatia wins then this is um, also a crucial match for England because they can avoid relegation. <sighs> there are so many permutations there. If Croatia gets two wins now then uh, Croatia could go through. Uh, although it's not, I mean, Spain, as we said, has six points. Uh, Croatia has one point, yes. That will see them through. Seven points. So uh, the group is still wide open, and I think for Croatia, this double, um, you know, if you look at it right, at first it seems, yeah, we lost 6 0 to Spain, but you got a point against uh, England. And you have now two games where you actually probably have a, small, a slim chance of doing something. Very interesting group, definitely one of the two. Again, if Spain wins, it's all decided. So I um, gotta see how it goes. And then if Spain wins, then Croatia against England uh, it is a relegation battle, although, you know, yep. And then Croatia needs to win in England. I mean, a Spain win is probably the one that, uh, that gives everything uh, most decided. Any other result opens up permutations. And yeah, that's maybe the charm of groups of three that you're not really out until it's done in many ways. It's a lot more open. Yes, we have already a few decided groups in once one way or, or another, but um, it's really tough. The challenge is always there because there's promotion and relegation in groups of three. That's a tall order. Okay, then <laughs> on Friday, the big matchup, of course, is Netherlands against France. It has a similar implication as the Spain, uh, the Spain Croatia, or Croatia Spain matchup, I better say. Um, if France win, they're through. That's their final game, and I would even say a draw because France is sitting at seven points currently. The Netherlands have three, and if they get a 
point it's eight and four and France is through so a draw and France is through to the final four well World Cup champions it's probably the most likely outcome that France will go in the final four if the Netherlands win then they still are behind France but then they have a um, final game against Germany uh, that could see them through now uh, the result is also interesting because as we know the Netherlands have three the Germany has one point if the Netherlands make one point then they only need, need to get a draw in Germany to avoid relegation and uh, Germany would need to beat them by a substantial margin because we know that if uh, level on points then uh, if two teams are level of points, then the direct comparison and uh, Germany with the, uh, all three against the Netherlands uh, doesn't look good. So, you know, that is probably any points won for the Netherlands is bad news for Germany. Gotta say it like that. Um, however, if France wins, they are through and Germany um, still needs to have a win against the Netherlands. But anyway, will do. Of course. So also makes things very interesting, I would say. Uh, in that match, the final matchup in Germany and Netherlands. I love how Germany actually scheduled this in Gelsenkirchen, which is relatively close to the Dutch border. Not as blatant as Russia did it with having the home game against Sweden in Kaliningrad and the home game against Turkey in Sochi basically choosing the closest cities to each of those two countries. I think this is just great scheduling. Uh, gotta be said, I loved it from Russia. Uh, and goes counterintuitive to many other uh, countries that just, you know, Austria is playing both their home games in Vienna against Bosnia, which is on Thursday, which will be. See, um, they will play in Vienna, yeah, I'll go to 30,000 tickets sold and I would say there's more than 50% of them are going to Bosnian fans. Yeah, it's, it's just a reality in Vienna, there are so many former Yugoslavs living there and it's, uh, that's pretty straightforward, I would say, to think about that. But the idea to play against Northern Ireland also in Vienna doesn't make any sense at all because uh, neither is your team at the moment good nor uh, is the are the fans that are interested in Northern Ireland. Sorry about that, but uh, the Austria fan is very, very picky. Uh, that even a decent League B team would not fill the stadium. I would say in most League A teams will not fill it. If they would play against Belgium, the stadium is not full. If the team is not full, great. And at the moment, it's kind of full. But yeah, the Russians did, it, did, did well. I think the Germans, I mean, Germany doesn't have to worry about selling out, I have to say. So, yeah, um, their final game in Gelsenkirchen. Maybe there's something riding on it, maybe it's already done. If the Netherlands win against France, then we already, already said that France still has a, is a point ahead of them. Um, and then it uh, depends also on the margin of victory. Uh, we know that France won 2 won at home against the Dutch. So uh, if the Dutch win by 1-0, then the way goal rule would see them through. 2-1 uh, at goal difference, where well, the Netherlands also look pretty good, I gotta say. So you, you know, uh, almost any win will put the Netherlands in a decent position, then they just need to get the draw, most likely against Germany, to win the group and make to the final four, and that would be a super surprise. I gotta say that because I thought this group will be between France and Germany, not between the France and the Netherlands. But yeah, my gut feeling is that France will probably see get the necessary point to see themselves through. And probably, if you ask me, I would like to see the draw. Uh, simply because I think a draw would settle the group. Meaning the French will be first, the Netherlands second, Germany third. That's uh, realistically, not eventually, but realistically, a true sense. Okay, and then on Saturday, we have the last chance of Italy. We have Portugal 
having now two, uh, a double. Portugal has six, uh, six points at the moment. Italy at four. They had the draw at home to Poland and then they got the win in Poland. Um, and I still cannot believe that with the two home games, yes, it's against a uh, big name of name Poland, but the two home games, Poland could get a single point out, out, out of there because I really thought that Poland can do something in this group. The way they played in Italy was actually quite impressive, but uh, I gotta say the way Italy played in Poland was also quite impressive. So yeah, there you go. Uh, it is, Italy needs to win this more or less. Uh, then they have a chance at the final four. Uh, if Italy wins this, they also cannot be re relegated anymore. I think they, they, they cannot even be relegated now because whatever they do, they won the direct duel against Poland. Um, so if Poland even wins against, um, yep, yeah, Italy is already um, cannot be releg re relegated anymore. That was a stupid thing, thing of me. Yeah, Poland is even relegated. Go figure. Uh, Well, are they? Let's just see. Uh, they have one point, they can only make four. Italy is sitting at four points, they cannot do that. Six, no, it doesn't work. You see, quick mental man. Poland is already re re I, it does That doesn't make much sense to me. So, Portugal, Italy. Uh, I think it's very simple. If Portugal gets the point, they're in the final four. If Italy wins, Italy is. Italy is in good position to making it to the final four, although they still need to hope that um, Portugal doesn't get a result in, uh, against Poland, which at home, yeah, I think still Port Portugal look, look, looks into good of a position. Uh, Italy for Portugal six, Portugal having two games, let's say uh, Italy makes seven, um, they win, then it depends also on how they win, but a win against Poland will see Portugal through, uh, no matter what. So, you know, uh, it's probably a good experience for Italy, and there, there won't be much more going on in that game. Uh, now that I talk myself, now that I I realized what's going on in that group. I honestly have to say uh, I'm a little bit deflated. Portugal looks way too good. They have the home game against Poland, where I honestly don't see them losing or even only a draw. Although Poland probably needs to make up something, but uh, realistically, Portugal gets the one point that they will uh, probably need. Um, Depending on what, yeah, they won only 1 0 against Italy in Lisbon. So if Italy, say, wins 2 0, Italy wins the direct duel, then a point will not be enough. <sighs> yeah. Now, Port Port Portugal is gonna make it out of the group. Uh, it just looked too good, even without Ronaldo, gotta be said. So yeah, there you have it, Group A. I think I will uh, leave, uh, I will leave it at here, and we'll talk about uh, Group uh, League B tomorrow. Uh, there are also still a few interesting permutations, especially I think the <laughs> the Austria group uh, is a lot of permutations in there, and also the Denmark uh, and Wales group. There are a few permutations in in, in, in there that could get very crazy. Um, but you see already, uh, there's quite a few things at stake. I think that both of the big, big name groups, uh, namely A1 and 4, uh, the France and the Spain groups, there are uh, really many options open. Um, the other two groups, yes, we have already a relegated team, so therefore, um, yeah, it only goes for top spot. We might get, we probably will get a final between uh, Switzerland and Belgium. Uh, the final. Yeah, the other group with Italy, as I said, I don't see Italy making it out of that group, even if they win against Portugal. Um, maybe if they destroy Por 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 Portugal, then morale, but I don't see it. Realistically, I really don't see it, even if Italy should get the win now. Uh, and 
given that they played well against Poland and there is maybe some, something growing, I don't think that's out of the question. I just think that uh, Portugal sits uh, in such a comfy position that even a loss will not be the end for their hopes. And so, yeah, what will be the final four? If you ask me right now, Group 1, I think France will come out of it. Um, group 2, I think Belgium will get the, the necessary point in Switzerland. Um, I just think that they are the more talented team. Um, I also think that um, Portugal will make it. And then we have Spain. I think those are also the teams, although... Nah. <laughs> I want that the Spain-Croatia game ends in the draw. So England has a shot at it. I think that would be the nicest, but I still think that Spain will get the job done. Uh, just realistically. So those are the four in the final four. And then it will be interesting how, how the draw will go. Uh, let's spin it further. My dream draw will then be France against Belgium and Spain against Portugal. And whoever plays in the final, that would be great. Yeah, so there you go. That's my take on League A. That's how things are in League A. And we're gonna look at League B tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed my take on these four League A groups and how I think it will go, how where things are and I hope you're looking forward to Nations League. I know it's not as exciting as probably club soccer at the moment but you know national team soccer is one of the great things that we have and we should uh, value it way more. Um, at the very least, I personally think for me as a collector, national team jerseys are nicer than, are in many ways nicer than club jerseys. Gotta be honest. Again, hope you like this one. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. As I said, tomorrow I'm going to do a quick uh, situation on league, how, leagues, how things are in League B. Um, and of course there are other videos, yesterday was my top 10, I do jersey reviews, I give you whatever I watch, I give you my thoughts on that. So uh, that's plenty to do on my soccer universe and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you soon.